Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi, welcome to CMA422 Structural Design. In this recorded video, we're going to learn on structural steel design, specifically for BIM. Without further ado, let's continue. First, we're going to look at the design philosophy. For steel design, the design approach employed the BS5950. So, bukannya 8210 lagi macam reinforced concrete ya. Eh? So, this one kita pakai uh, British standard yang lain. 5950 is based on limit state philosophy similar to reinforced concrete design. Some ultimate limit state to consider our strength, stability, fracture due to fatigue and brittle failure. Kita buat limit state tu to make sure that it will not yield. Maksudnya dia takkan sampai the maximum. Rupture ataupun buckle under influence of ultimate design load, forces ataupun moment eh. Ataupun lain-lain lah. Because of actually uh, whatever that coming from the load, itu adalah force. And force it also cause the moment. So those things yang actually will cause rupture ataupun buckling of the the elements eh checking beams uh, you, maksudnya untuk beams you have to check for ultimate limit state untuk bending and shear because of kalau you belajar masa RC design sekalipun beam susceptible to bending and shear sebab kita kira dua benda ni kan and for columns it is compressive ultimate limit state eh and bending ultimate limit state tapi if only applicable because normally for column tak ada bending jarang ada bending eh misalnya penyebab bending ni adalah lateral load lah okay, normally it is compressive uh, load yang datang pada atas for column kita akan check for compressive ultimate limit state for stability just to make sure the applied load uh, do not induce excessive sway sebab stability we must make sure that the elements itself stable so kita tak nak ada sway ke kanan ke kiri or over turning eh. We have fracture due to fatigue. This is this occur uh, to structure that repeatedly subjected to rapid reversal stress. Sebenarnya majority of building structure uh, changes in stress ni are gradual tak banyak. Perubahan loading. Okay senang cerita stress tu sebab stress load yang cause the stress eh. However kalau ada macam dynamic loading like bridges eh. Sebab ada kereta. Kereta ni getaran. Kan kereta tu tiba banyak. Okay lalu atas bridges. That kind of thing. So itu ada dynamic load eh. Tiba-tiba dia hilang. Uh, dia macam. Terus uh, datang kejap lah lalu. Datang kejap hilang. Datang kejap hilang. So maksud that is dynamic loading eh. Tu maksudnya rapid reversal stress eh. This can cause the fatigue eh. We have a brittle. So brittle failure ni. Such a sudden failure due, due to brittle fracture. The work uh, is exposed to low temperature. Tapi in Malaysia tak ada lah. Okay, this always happen dekat four season country macam tu. Welded structure are pa particularly susceptible. Meaning the connection is welded. Eh. Dia pakai welding. Okay, so connection dia pun steel juga. But if it, it is protected against the weather, it is unlikely to occur. So this kind of thing is more likely to occur to welded structure. So some service stability limit states to consider are deflection. Deflection is for example when you put a load on top of a beam, the beam will deflect. Maksudnya dia akan melengkung ke bawah itu deflection. We have a corrosion. So corrosion ni probably because of the weather must ensure whatever that we check eh. Maybe we can use a certain classes of steel of, yang available yang ada weather resistant qualities eh. Contohnya macam oxide skin. Oxide skin ni dia form on surface of steel yang akan prevent further cor corrosion. And also this kind of steel yang ada corrosion resistant ni higher the price eh compared to the normal one. Normally yang this one kita pakai yang kat luar. Okay contohnya macam kat bridges eh. Because it, it is exposed to the weather so you need some weather prote protection fire protection traditionally casing uh, the steel work in concrete kita buat macam composite punya structure lah for example eh rupa steel tu macam ni lah steel tu bukan macam steel bar ya eh. <laughs> macam this one we have like eye section that kind of thing or we have like hollow section macam ni tengah ni hollow eh Lu ada lubang ada void we have like eye section we have like L section and others this is the steel elements that we are talking about we're not talking about the reinforcement bar you you boleh in case dia masuk, maksudnya you boleh letak konkrit terus. Konkrit kan terus mendalah ni semua. 
but it is heavy. Okay, because of you dah tambah additional weight to encase the steel inside the concrete. Sebab you nak provide protection. This one also you boleh guna to provide protection against the weather and also against the fire because concrete dia quite fireproof eh compared to steel. Ataupun there's other like way alternative for example you use a dry sheet material plaster perhaps you can just plaster you have this kind of ni you can just plaster the area that is exposed plaster saja area ni semua you plaster plaster directly to the surface of steel ataupun plaster applied to a metal latting maksudnya you ada metal you ada letak another another surface of metal and then you you plaster lah ataupun you pakai vermiculite vermiculite spray ataupun you pakai intumescent paint Actually, this one you belajar kot. Masih you belajar theory about steel or whatsoever. How to protect it against fire. But this is what I just explained a little bit. Okay, just to give you idea how to protect against fire lah. Dengan feather. Okay, intumation pain ni macam is a different type of pain that can provide protection against heat. Ataupun fire lah. Normally apa yang kita buat. Bila kita design. This is the ultimate design load. The formula which is 1.4. GK plus 1.6 QK. As usual juga kita kira moment and such. Bendanya sama sajalah. The way we calculate for loading. But okay here I want to explain a little bit about the design strength. PY of grade 43 steel. Ordinary steel lah yang we normally use in the market. So design strength. So, kalau you nampak reinforcement bar, kita panggil dia FY. If we talk about RC design strength, dia punya simbol adalah FY. But here, we call it PY. This one this one for steel design. Macam contohnya, okay, ini. Ini adalah I-beam. Kalau you nampak, eh. Okay, ada macam-macam lagi bentuk lain. For this kind of steel elements, the strength, we call it PY. PY ni, dia depends on the thickness capital T. You refer to this gambar. So, you nampak T tu kat mana? Ini T. Depends on this T. Let's say, this T is less than or equal to 16. The PY should be 275. If T ni bigger than 17. Okay, kalau kat sini 17 sampai 40. Dia adalah 265. Kalau ini 41 sampai 63. And here should be 64 sampai 100. It depends on this. The, ini yang dan dekat factory. Normally kalau you tengok like all the elements yang steel elements ni. Yeah, bukan kita construct dekat site. It is being manufactured in factory. So this is the standard. Steel section are classified in BS uh, 5.5.5.0 in relation to B over T. So, if you notice, where is B, where is T? So, this is B. You divide with this big T. Mana big T? Okay, T yang ni. Senang cerita sama jugalah. Atas ni pun separuh ni adalah B. B, you bahagi dengan T. Of the flange. Flange yang mana? Okay, flange ni adalah yang ni. Area atas ni adalah flange. Area bawah ni flange. Ni web. B over T of the flange. And D over T of the web. So of the web, web ni yang kat sini. So you nampak D mana D te yang tengah ni bahagi dengan dia punya thickness ni. So ini sama juga kalau you tengok yang untuk uh, flange. Dia pakai small B half of this big B. But you have to divide with the big capital T kat sini. Okay so sama je sebenarnya. Sebenarnya you nak ambil width divide by the thickness. This one sebenarnya untuk kita tahu jenis classification of Beam tu. Okay, beam tu adalah jenis apa. Sebab nanti kita akan belajar on beam classification. So, if you see here, you boleh nampak lah mana satu dia si D. So, you must know what uh, what is what it is being called eh. Apa yang dimaksud dengan D. Sini bukan effective depth eh. Kalau maksudnya you nampak B, D ni apa benda semua ni, you boleh tengok dekat sini. Kalau you nak tengok dekat bawah ni, universal beam. Kenapa kita panggil universal beam? Because dia adalah standard size. Standard yang may be manufactured in factory. UB. Okay, universal beam. So, universal beam ni, actually if you look at here, you akan nampak dia ada macam gang. This is like one gang. Bukan gang lah, ada satu siri. Okay, nampak dia panggil serial size. Contoh eh, I bagi kat sini. 457, 191, the serial size here. Look at this serial size. Why dia, uh, dia actually kumpul kan? Ini dalam satu serial size. 
Okay, walaupun saiz dia sebenarnya lain-lain. Kalau you tengok D dia tak sama, B dia tak sama, uh, capital B, width of section tak sama, thickness of web tak sama, thickness of flange tak sama, semua tak sama. But because it is almost sama, 457, okay, 457 ni sebenarnya refer to apa? Okay, 191 ni kat sini, 457 ni, tinggi dia. Memanglah, I tahulah beam tu sebenarnya I section. 457 and this is 191. 457, kalau you tengok the gang ni, 457, the depth, the big D. The big D is 467, 463, 460, 457, 453, lebih kurang dalam satu gang dia. So, you tengok mana D, ah ni. Ini adalah tinggi dia. That's what I draw here. Satu gang, satu siri. You see that 191. So, 191 referring to capital B. Capital B, ah ni satu gang dia. 191, 192.8 kan lebih kurang. 192, 191.31. Although, it's not exactly like 191 but it almost 191. So, dia duduk dalam satu siri. It is easier to identify and label the beam that kita pakai eh. Okay, this one is capital B. So, betul lah. So, atas ni adalah capital B. For example, if you want to choose this beam, how are we going to write it? So, it is 457-191-74 UB. So, we already know UB ni maksudnya versatile beam. Ataupun kalau you tak tulis macam ni, you don't put UB, you tak lah. Dia punya berat sebenarnya. Kilogram per meter UB. Ha, ada juga yang tulis macam ni lah. 74 kilogram per meter because of 74 to refer this mass per meter and then UV which is universal beam. So sebenarnya dalam ni untuk setiap satu ni okay mana-mana you ambil lah dia ada dia punya characteristics masing-masing eh meaning uh, ratios of local buckling dia different second moment area dia different memanglah different because size dia berubah size dia tak sama bila size ber berubah Mestilah tak sama dari elasticity. Mestilah tak sama daripada plasticity. Tak sama eh. Uh, thickness dia pun tak sama. So, semua jadi lain. So, it depends on section mana yang you pakai. So, you must aware on that eh. So, if you see kat sini pun benda ni sama saja. It just that dia continue. This is the smallest size. So, you nampak 457152 yang dekat atas ni. It's actually sambung dekat bawah lah. 457191 lepas tu maksudnya is a continuous uh, table. But satu muka surat tak cukup. <laughs> so, I separate kan dia. I hope that you can look at this and then you try to familiarize with this table eh. Because table ni memang kita akan setiap refer eh. Kalau nanti bila kita calculate dan kita akan kena select UB yang sesuai. Maksud universal beam yang mana kita nak pakai. We have to do some classification. We need to know that beam, beam yang kita nak pakai tu which one. Beam tu adalah plastik ke, compact ke, semi-compact ke, slender. Because it always depends on jenis beam to you design macam mana eh. Local buckling can be avoided by limiting the width to thickness ratio. So maksudnya yang tadi lah if you see that uh, tadi ada bagi tahu pasal B over T ataupun D over T tu ya. So kita kena tengok dari segi thickness, uh, width to thickness ratio of each element of cross section. Maksudnya flange tengah web ni subject to compression due to moment or azelut. Okay so ada empat classes of classification which are plastic, compact, semi-compact and slender. Design as a plastic. Maksudnya you akan allow rotation. Design you must allow rotation. And kalau you tengok dekat bawah ni makin lama slender ni makin kurang and semi-compact kurang compact. Okay but here, okay maybe confused lagi kita tengok kat belakang. ME, MP. ME ni adalah elastic moment. MP tu adalah plastic moment. Property of the structure section. Okay, plastic moment is defined as moment at which the entire cross section has reached its yield stress. Kalau you masih ingat, I pernah explain dalam chapter 1 part 2 pasal uh, elastic and plastic. Uh, so, kalau tak ingat, kena refer balik that graph. That graph tu sebenarnya bagi you idea sikit what is elastic and plastic ni. Which, why elastic moment is defined as the moment at which the entire cross section has reached its elastic limit. Elastic limit tu maksudnya lepas dia daripada elastic limit beam you for example dia tak boleh return to dia punya original shape. Kalau ada force dan you remove force tu. Kalau dia masih dalam elastic limit dia akan return to the original shape. Yield stress ni apa? Ha, yield stress ni sebelum dia fail lah. Lama-lama atas lagi pada yield stress dia akan 
Lama-lama dia akan pil patah lah. First is class 1 plastic. When you design the section is plastic. Okay, maksudnya section yang Okay, plastic hinge can be, de can be developed with significant rotation. Okay, apa maksud plastic hinge ni? Deformation of a uh, part of beam whenever plastic bending happens. Hinge kat sini maksudnya there's no capability to resist moment. Kalau plastic hinge ni dia akan behave like standard hinge. So, maksudnya dia akan permit free rotation. You design ni dia you akan benarkan rotation. Bila you design dia as plastic. So all members must be this type. Flange dengan web must be this type. Ada juga flange yang bukan plastik. Web je plastik. Sebab kita kan kira untuk dua-dua. Satu B over T and D over T. Kita akan guna this two ratios ni. Maksudnya B over T and D over T. Kita akan tahu flange ni adakah plastik. Web ni adakah plastik? Ha, macam itulah. Class 2, compact, full elastic moment can be developed. But local buckling may prevent production of full plastic moment. Elastic moment ni, okay, tengok balik elastic moment apa maksud dia kat atas ni. Elastic moment is defined as moment at which entire cross-section has reached it. Elastic limit. Entire cross-section tu boleh develop. Moment dia tu boleh develop sampai reach its elastic limit. Tapi local buckling may prevent production of full plastic moment. Local buckling, if you see here, this is local buckling. Ini kalau dekat web. Kalau dekat flange, okay, you akan nampak dia macam ni. Sebenarnya, bila kita provide like up until like full plastic moment, maksudnya the, the elements itself is very very, macam cakap, the thickness. B over T ni, ratio dia tak banyak beza. Sebab so, B you buat divide by T kan. Okay, tak banyak beza. Jadi, nombor dia very low. Okay, so bila dia lebih lebih low, dia boleh support a higher moment. Plastic moment. So, maksudnya plastic moment ni memang moment yang tinggi lah. Tapi, bila compact ni maksudnya dia dah kurang lagi. Dia baru sampai full elastic moment. Tapi, dah ada local buckling. Maksudnya, because of the thickness tu, tak cukup untuk resist daripada uh, buckling. Dia akan buckle dulu tak dapat sampai full plastic moment. Semi compact cross section can develop their elastic moment capacity but local buckling may prevent full elastic moment capacity. Cross section boleh develop elastic moment capacity tapi tak sampai full. Maksudnya it will not reach its Elastic limit. The entire cross section tu mungkin tak dapat reach its elastic limit. The moment that the structure can resist will not as much as full plastic moment lah. Okay and then slender contents and the elements subject to compression due to moment or as a load. Local buckling may prevent the full elastic moment capacity from develop. So slender ni yang paling kurus. Okay so sebenarnya you nampak ni ada. Plastic we can see here this is plastic, this is compact, this is semi compact. Yang lepas-lepas daripada this one adalah semua adalah slender. E ni constant. Constant ni apa? Dia ada 275 divided by PY. So PY tu depends lah. Kalau ingatkan tadi kita tengok dekat dalam table tu kalau T is less or equal to 16, PYU adalah 200 75. So, you ambil value 275 ni. Ha, you letaklah dalam ni. So, you akan dapat 1. So, 9 darab 1, 9 lah. Kalau dia plastik, element which exceed this limit are to be taken as class 4 slender cross section. So, ini yang saya cakap eh. Okay, so maksudnya sekarang ni, ini adalah limit dia. Value, kalau you nak kata dia adalah plastik, B over T for example. So, right, ni tengok eh, B over T kat sini. Must be less than 9E. Nanti baru dia jadi elastik. Kalau dia lebih daripada 9E, mungkin 9.5 ke, uh, dia adalah compact. Kalau dia 14 ke, dia adalah semi-compact. Nanti kita akan refer sebab kalau you masih ingat, tadi I ada tunjuk yang stable kan. Sebenarnya, okay, you boleh naik tengok sebenarnya B over T, D over T ni semua kat sini. Okay, tapi kat sini table ni dia dah mudahkan you lah, you dah jumpa boleh jumpa. So, you nak tengok section tu jenis apa kan, you tak tahu. Okay. For flange dia, okay for example, you ambil ni lah, ha, tengok lah. 4.92 B over T dia. B over T, T 4.92, obviously it is less than 9 constant. Sebab contohnya, I cakap tu PY kita yang ni lah, 275 ni. So, dia adalah plastik. Ini adalah untuk flange. Okay, so flange untuk beam, kita tengok kat sini. Web untuk beam, kita tengok kat sini. So, D over T. Sama juga you refer to 35.8. Comparekan dengan 80 constant ni lah. So, 80 darab constant 1. So, 35.8 obviously is less than 
AT. Sebelum last AT, kita pun dapat dua-dua elemen dalam kita punya beam tu adalah plastik. So, after kita dah classify kan dia, we need to know the shear capacity. Maksudnya, uh, capacity you punya beam. How much it can support. PV kat sini adalah shear capacity. Okay, ini being taken daripada PS. Formula dia is 0.6 PY AV. PY ni PY lah, uh, steel strength tu. And then AV ni adalah area. Depends on jenis apa you punya beam tu lah. I section ke, you have like Roll I, H and channel section, load parallel channel. Ataupun welded I section ke, rectangular hollow section ke, welded box section ke. So, you have a lot of type of section ni sebenarnya eh. Kalau you tengok yang table yang saya tunjuk tadi tu, sebenarnya dia ada banyak jenis. Okay, yang sebab kita just cover I section sahaja. In design, actually it can be like box section, it can be hollow section. It can be solid bar, it can be like circular, hollow, macam ni ada, ada lubang kat tengah. But kita belajar satu saja. so this is A. Okay, we are, uh, kita belajar ni je. Roll, I, H and channel section load parallel to web. In the syllabus, we, I just cover this one only lah. Just replace je A ni dengan T, D. T ni apa, D ni apa, you pun tahu you boleh tengok pada you punya section. Section ni yang mana satu. Masukkan value, you akan dapat capacity dia. And then you akan compare dengan FV which is the force, shear force daripada yang loading yang you kira previously you akan compare dengan this one so kita akan tahu shear capacity dia lah and another thing, bila kita nak nak kira tu, kita kena tengok juga shear force ni does not exceed 60% of shear capacity so maksudnya sekarang yang you kira PV ni you kena darab lagi dengan 0.6, 60% 60% adalah 0.6 0.6. So, you akan dapat some value kat sini. And then, baru you boleh compare dengan FV. Kalau dia less, maksudnya dia adalah low shear. Means that shear force yang produced by the load can be resist by the PV. Okay, shear capacity of the beam. Kita kena tengok juga moment capacity. So, MC here means moment capacity. Kita nak tengok untuk resist moment. Kita kena tengok capacity beam tu whether it can resist the moment that produced by the load. Using the formula of PYS. S here means plastic modulus. And Z, kalau tengok kat sini adalah elastic modulus. Let's say you just for class 1 plastic or class 2 compact cross section sebab that's why you kena buat classification tu dulu. Dia adalah compact ke, semi-compact ke, plastik ke. Bila you dah ada dia punya classes ni, baru you tahu which formula yang you akan guna. Sama ada this one, this one atau this one. Kalau katakan plastik, so this is the one. Tapi, lepas you kira benda ni, okay, you dapat moment capacity. Kita punya beam tu, contohnya it is plastik kan. Eh? Kita dah tahu, okay, dia punya classification adalah plastik. So, we using this formula. Okay, kita must make sure that it is less or equal to 1.2 PYZ. Z kat sini adalah elastic modulus. You kena kira lah. So, you check dulu. MCU less than 1.2 PYZ. Maksudnya, okay. Bila dah okay, baru you compare dengan moment yang being produced by the loading. I think sampai situ saja I will end this lecture here. Thank you so much. Have a nice day everyone.